Hi there, this is Bob from Insidium, and in today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be taking the brilliant new NX Follow Geo, and we're going to be setting up this nice fluid simulation. Now, this is cool because we can get fluid and particle effects to follow the surface of any scene geometry, even splines. So, let's jump into Cinema 4D, we'll start the clock, and we'll begin. In our scene we have particles emitting from the surface of this torus primitive. If I make it invisible you'll see the particles. The torus is default apart from the pipe radius has been reduced to 25. So in the emitter, in the object tab, we're in object emitter shape, referencing the torus, emitting from the polygon area. In the emission tab, we're in rate mode, we're emitting for 15 frames, 7000 particles per frame, speed of zero, small radius 0.3. So what we want to do is create an animation where they're following the surface of this torus in quite a noisy, random-looking way. So let's bring in an NX Follow Geo. I've got my Nexus tools docked here. You'll find them in Insidium, X Particles, Nexus. Here's the NX Follow Geo. This requires an object or multiple objects. Let's bring in our torus. And every object you have, if you highlight it, it gets its own separate settings. Now we want our particles to constantly follow the surface of this torus and never leave its surface, so we're going to put the particle field of view up to the maximum 360 degrees. And now we need, if we hit play, nothing's going to happen because there's no forces in this scene moving the particles. So let's bring in a modifier that does have that force. We'll bring in an NX Turbulence. And in this, we'll just keep it pretty much default. Let's just make a couple of changes. In the noise type, we'll put it on for a noise. And the strength, we'll put it on 20. And we'll hit play. And you'll see that our particles now have been moved by the noise. But the NX Follow Geo is keeping them on the surface. But we want them to kind of be slowed down by a bit of surface friction. So let's go to the NX Follow Geo. And look, we can increase this friction up to, say, 4%. Hit play. And yeah, look, straight away, we're getting a really nice, wispy, almost smoky looking particle animation as those particles follow the surface of that torus. Brilliant. Now, we can offset them from the, the surface if we want. Let's make the torus visible again. If we add, say, 10 centimeters offset, now they're offset from that surface. And then we can give them an offset variation, which will give them a bit of depth. If you keep your eye on where my mouse is down here, we add, say, two centimeters variation. Now they have a bit of depth in that, um, in that offset. But if you want a really fine, wispy look, you're going to get more of that effect if you have no offset variation. Let's put that offset down to maybe five centimeters and make our torus invisible again. So that is a really cool look. And for many sims, depending on what you want to do, this is going to work for you, this type of look. It's that simple. But at the moment, these particles aren't interacting with each other. And we're going to set that up with another solver. In fact, before we do, let's get some colour in this scene because it's a bit flat at the moment. And I can show you the brand new and amazing new modifier, NX Colour. Now, with this, you can do loads of really technical, cool layering and blending of colouring effects. But you can also work very simply with it just to get some nice real-time colour feedback. So we're going to do that. Let's bring in a gradient by parameter. And we're going to map this colour gradient to the speed of our particles. Uh, speed, there we go. Hit play. And now we're getting that, which is looking good. And if we want to make adjustments, let's say that we wanted fewer white particles, we'll increase the max, we just increase it. We can see that difference happening in real time. So that works really well. Okay, so that's our NX color. Now we want our particles to interact with each other. And we're going to use our NX fluids to do that. There's loads of things we could use to get them to interact. We've got NX push. Uh, we have got NX constraints. We've got particle to particle collisions. But we're going to use fluids. Let's bring in a fluids. And we're going to keep it in the new default of SBH mode. Let's increase the sub steps up to four just for a bit more accuracy because it's quite fast moving. Hit play just in the default fluid settings. And yeah, look at that. Straight away, we have got a really nice fluid like solve as our particles are splashing their way across the surface of our torus. That's looking really nice just straight off the bat. But we can, of course, make some adjustments to this. Uh, if we wanted this to have maybe some more beading effects of this water flow, we could go to our NX uh, fluid settings and increase the surface tension. 
And that's going to encourage, yes, look, it's encouraging them to bead together. But remember, our NX follow Geo has no variation in this offset. So it's kind of almost trying to keep them flat on that surface. So if we offer it a little bit of variation, it's going to give the fluid more chance, yes, to form tighter beads with that surface tension. So that's one reason why we can add a bit of variation to help that fluid solve, give it a little bit more leeway in creating that nice beading surface tension effect. Let's take that back down because I did like that noisy look that we were getting with the lower surface tension value. And that is how we can use the fantastic new NX Follow Geo to get particles to follow the surface of any scene object. We can also do this on splines and edges, but that is for a different video. And we could also, of course, mix all of those particle effects with our solvers, including NX Fluids.